Hello and welcome back, thank you for being here. In this video, I will share the latest on CBDCs, central bank digital currencies. I think there is some confusion about the recent bill that seeks to ban the Fed from issuing its central bank digital currency. And so I will try to hopefully provide some clarity. The House Financial Services Committee advanced a bill. You can see it on your screens right now, and I will also link it down below for you. The bill that seeks to block the Federal Reserve from being able to issue a central bank digital currency. This bill has not yet been signed into law. It's still in its relatively early stages, but it has gained a tremendous amount of support. Reportedly, 60 members of Congress support it. There are other sponsors as well, um, such as two bankers associations. The bill was passed out of the Financial Services Committee and reported to the House floor. Representative Tom Emmer, a Republican from Minnesota, introduced the CBDC Anti-Surveillance State Act once again. He uh, tried to introduce it back in February of this year, and it did not get much traction, so this time around, it did. Here's what the proposed legislation would do. It would amend the Federal Reserve Act to officially prohibit the Federal Reserve from, quote, issuing a central bank digital currency or any digital asset that is substantially similar under any other name or label directly to an individual. So he's specifically talking about retail CBDCs, not necessarily wholesale CBDCs. You may remember that there are several versions. There is also a hybrid CBDC, but retail is what all individuals would use, while wholesale central bank digital currencies are used by corporations and banks to settle large transactions. In his speech during the committee hearing, Emmer called a CBDC, quote, downright un-American. He also pointed out that there is an appetite for surveillance here in the US, which is, of course, not news to anybody, but take a look at what he said. This appetite for financial surveillance may be gaining a stronghold, unfortunately, right here at home. The White House issued an executive order placing urgency on central bank digital currency research and development. And the agency reports to that executive order have made it clear that the Biden administration is not only itching to create a CBDC, but they're willing to trade Americans' right to financial privacy for a surveillance-style central bank digital currency. As you can see, he made some great points there saying a CBDC would undermine the American way of life. Representative Tom Emmer made an excellent point that, in my opinion, truly hits the nail on the head. He warned against the weaponization of money as the federal government seeks to maintain, and not just maintain, but also it seeks to expand financial control. So this is the news on the CBDC Anti-Surveillance State Act that was introduced by Representative Emmer. Another Republican representative, French Hill, says he does not believe that ultimately Congress would support a CBDC. He believes that the Fed doesn't have any authority to really make any progress towards developing a digital currency. To do that, it would first need to seek an approval from Congress. This is exactly the same thing that Fed Chair Jerome Powell said too. He said the Fed would need to get a green light from Congress first. However, as I mentioned before, that doesn't really align with the fact that there is already a presidential order in place to research and to develop a CBDC. So, um, of course, I'm not an expert on the intricacies of these federal legislation processes, but wouldn't Congress first need to agree to the Fed developing and piloting a digital dollar? Um, the Fed has already had a limited scope program with several of the biggest banks here in the United States. They have not announced the results, but they definitely announced the beginning of those programs. As you can see, there is a considerable amount of opposition to a CBDC in Congress at this time. The main concerns are exactly the same ones all of us have, transaction transparency and privacy rights. During the Financial Committee hearing, there were witnesses who openly supported a CBDC. For example, a Columbia Law School professor said 
My opinion is that it is incumbent upon the United States to provide leadership with respect to an inevitable process that is going to occur across the world. The question is what sort of digital protections are going to attend digital fiat currency. In fact, in early September, Representative Stephen Lynch, he is a Democrat and he's also on the Financial Committee, he proposed a new legislation that would create a bit of a different version of a CBDC. His proposal calls for a digital dollar that is not built on the blockchain and allegedly it has user privacy controls, although it is not clear what type of controls would be in place. Lynch proposed an electronic currency and secure hardware eCash Act that would allow the Treasury to launch a digital dollar, which would be, in effect, a CBDC, just not on blockchain. As you can see, there is quite a bit of unknown still. We're definitely seeing a significant amount um, of support from Congress um, to ban a CBDC, but there are also other discussions as well, such as the idea from Stephen Lynch to introduce eCash. And that could complicate things, of course. I will keep you updated. I know that many of you are very much against it and are concerned. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you learned something from it, if you found it useful, make sure that you show your support, give it a like and consider sharing it. Subscribe to my channels on YouTube and Rumble. I would love to have you back for my next video. And if you enjoy reading, follow me on Substack for more weekly content. And I will see you in my new one tomorrow. Bye for now.